Hi, my name is Chris, aka The Philosopher's Games, and today we discuss episode 4 of The Rings of Power Show, and I want to give you here my first thoughts and impressions and details I noticed in this episode. It's not the complete full analysis and review yet, but um, the best thing I can produce in a very short amount of time. Before we start a few hints, as always, shoutouts to the artists who allowed me to use their fantastic artworks and also I assume you have seen at least all the episodes so far, so spoiler warning I guess. Episode 4 is a strange one. It has some great moments that are fun, but in my opinion often struggles with connecting those in a way that does not feel artificial or rushed. Overall, the episode felt like Sauron himself was in its back with a whip, constantly pushing it forward. There was no time to rest. The episode had to accomplish a lot and it did, but from my perspective not always in the most elegant way. Rings of Power suffers from too much setup quite a bit. We are 4 episodes into season 1, so half time, and I think we will still see a bit more setup even in episode 5. The problem with these story setups is that here it often happens that the plot in the script pushes the characters forward, but it would be better if the characters through their actions, dialogues and interactions would develop the plot further instead. This way it would feel more natural. If you do it the other way around it feels forced and constructed like an invisible power from outside makes characters do things and not the characters themselves. Of course, to introduce a character at the beginning, the script might need to push the character a bit, but in Rings of Power this never ends so far. We often see this within Galadriel's story and that is not the fault of the actress, but of the writing. She is moved around so much in the story and she is often alone even when there are other characters. So she can't really develop further in the first two episodes. I guess only her dialogue with Elrond offered her an opportunity for character development and then only in episode 3 with Elendil is the next one. Beyond that she had to jump off a boat, swim in the ocean, fight a sea monster and so on. At the same time she is written in a way that she needs a lot of character development. From Galadriel as child over child Galadriel in the body of an adult to the Lord of the Rings Galadriel we know maybe at the end of season 5. A long way to go, but they were busy for two episodes to bring her to Númenor, which also introduced a bunch of other characters which also needed to be set up. Now we are four episodes in and the writers needed to slowly initiate the meeting of her and Arondir's story plus her needed character development, all that in just two episodes, while other plot lines also needed work. As you can imagine, this can only lead into an episode that has to make haste, and that is exactly what we got. And though I liked the first two episodes, I think her setup did Galadriel a huge disservice there. If we compare that to Elrond, he is far more time efficient. He has time to have a long conversation with Galadriel, go to Eregion, go to Khazad-dûm, learn why Durin is angry at him, mend his friendship with the dwarf prince, meet his wife and children, convince the dwarves of helping Eregion plus adding some nice lore details that help us understanding Durin, the dwarves and Elrond better. In the same time Galadriel is on her little boat tour. By episode 4 he even added more lore details and found out about their Mithril, which might lead to further conflict and he does not even appear in episode 3. Here we also heavily notice that Elrond, after a very brief setup, develops his story further by his actions and dialogue with others. It helps that his setup is less convoluted than Galadriel's as well and it seems differently written. I would even say it is written better. And the weirdest thing, while he does all those things, the pacing of his storyline feels far less rushed. Galadriel went from insulting the queen to prison cell to refining her missing diplomatic skills through Halbrand to freeing herself and breaking into the tower of the king in exile to convincing Miriel to help her in just one episode. No wonder it feels rushed and hard to believe as a result. 
If you go back to episode 1, we see Galadriel climbing up this ice wall and searching for Sauron. These scenes eat a lot of time and I like them, but in episode 4 she just teleports or fast travels up that tower because there is no time for climbing or any details of her way. Don't get me wrong, it's less about seeing her actually climb and more about the difference in taking time to show what the character is doing. It feels super rushed as a result, though the important story scenes work well in my opinion and I really like the actors, but the writing is really giving them a hard time here to unfold their characters. On top of that Galadriel antagonizes all characters instantly who want to help her. The only character she does see as a friend is the one who does not want to help her and who is a scoundrel without a moral compass and whose ancestors were a blood oath to Morgoth the first Dark Lord. It's kind of funny if you look at it that way. Galadriel is incredibly bad at diplomacy, reading people and situations. Imagine Elrond would be in Númenor. I though think it's still an interesting setup for her because Halbrand is good at diplomacy and understanding other people, but his chaotic and self-focused nature brings him into trouble, while Galadriel is less chaotic and wants to oppose evil, but she is not able to move forward without fighting and being trapped in her obsession to find Sauron. This is an interesting combination, but of course so far away from the Galadriel we know that she feels over the top in that regard and for some people even annoying. Luckily this might now change with the character development she made in episode 4 and so I look forward to see what she does next with these new skills she just learned. So far I see the potential, but the way to this point was just a complete mess and felt incredibly artificial at times. The Harfoot and Arondir storylines were also not as long stuck in setup as well, so they also worked better. However, this broke a bit again for Arondir when he awoke in this prison camp of the Orcs. Here the script dictated that his two elven friends were captured as well off screen. Of course, it's hinted at that they searched for him and one could assume it is how they got captured, but it still felt forced, especially in the context of both of them dying. Now in episode 4 he meets Adar and he lets him go to deliver a message which seems strange. He has other prisoners which he could have sent less capable in combat than Arondir. It feels again forced by the script, but in my opinion these forced elements were still less present so far. Theo as a little troublemaker going to the village to search for food made sense from his character's perspective, but then his escape felt forced again, like when he walked around that last corner to escape we all knew he would be grabbed by an orc, and when the orc wanted to slice his arm off we know Arondir would save him, which might later improve his relationship to the elf. Time is again a huge problem. When they leave the forest it's conveniently sunrise and also the orcs miss every shot, even when their target is not even moving anymore. Felt again very artificial, but as said, they needed to somehow free Arondir and make Theo escape with a sword. How Bronwyn got there, met them in the forest and why she went there alone unarmed will remain a mystery as well. It of course makes sense that she goes searching her son, but I would have expected that at least a few people of the village would come with her. As said, time seems very strange, like how long was Theo sitting in that well, when he and his friend were in the village the sun was still shining. Same with Galadriel leaving and being in Númenor and at the same time building the forge made quite a bit of progress and it looked absolutely massive. Time seems very fluid in the show. Of course lore wise there are some stretches and contradictions as well, but often I felt these were not the main problems of the show so far, like a Palantir could see distant places or send thoughts to other Palantiri. It would also record what it saw and save it so that you could look with it into the past or past recordings if you want to call it like that in this context, but you could not look into the future with it. 
still visions of the future or a possible outcome of it existed in Tolkien's world among men and elves, but those did not require a palantir and were often sent by the Valar, the so to say high angels in Tolkien's world that form a god pantheon. I found the idea that the other seeing stones were hidden in Numenor interesting. They were in the possession of the faithful, for example Elendil's father, and when Numenor became more and more hostile towards the elves, those might have hidden those stones. There should be a total of seven in Numenor, also is this Narsil there in the background? I was also surprised that Elrond and before Kilibrimbor talked about his father Erendil, who can be seen as a star in the sky. I like this scene quite a lot and it shows that the writers can deliver something decent if they want and take time for it. I also thought if Kilibrimbor and Erendil could have met in the first age and I think it's definitely possible. Both fled from Gondolin after its destruction though Erendil was just a small child then. But most elves including Erendil and his parents went to the mouth of Sirion to hide from Morgoth and find a new home. It would make sense that Kilibrimbor also went there and so saw a young Erendil growing up and later building his legendary ship Vingilote there. Let's hope that the setup is mostly done and that the creators of the show now have the time to let the characters develop the plot further instead of them forcing the characters to do things. It's really about time after 4 hours that the actual story of Rings of Power begins, though I have the bad feeling that episode 5 will still need more setup because the antagonists need a bit more screen time as well. Still curious what might happen next episode though. Overall episode 4 was a mixed bag and I think some strong scenes, especially with Elrond, the Durins and Disa, saved it from being an absolute catastrophe, but still for me it was also not a great episode. But I see the potential. Acting, music, cinematography, designs, visuals are all pretty good most of the time. For example, the orc designs are really awesome. Only the writing and obsession with setups is holding it back from feeling more natural and actually becoming great. The question remains, what is Rings of Power about? And after 4 hours there's still no good answer to that because the main plotline about those rings and Sauron has not even started yet. I hope you found this remotely useful, let me know in the comments. Also feel free to press the like button and maybe subscribe for more Rings of Power and Tolkien lore content. I usually focus on the books. My book lore videos will continue after Rings of Power season 1 is done. Maybe check out my quite detailed lore videos out in the meantime. I have like several hours of content about Elrond or also started a video series on Galadriel from the books. Next week there will be another roundtable stream with other Tolkien creators on my channel discussing episode 4. If everything works out, that will be fun. <laughs> For my German speaking viewers, I'm also invited by the German Tolkien Society to discuss episode 3 and 4 on Tuesday. Besides that there might be an episode 4 watch party this time with a correct time code. So tons of content to come. Again, thank you for watching and goodbye.